I don't think there's ever been a film I've wanted less than this movie. I've always felt there's something uninspired, cynical and deeply unenchanting in the way Disney seems to have taken to scrolling through the amazing legacy of their animation back catalogue and finding all those tales they so wonderfully captured in beautiful hand-drawn masterworks, then taking those same classics and remaking them into what I feel are pretty average CG heavy live action affairs. While I realise the target audience for these flicks tends to not include me and there is actually a fair bit of merit to be found in some of them, they just don't really appeal to my tastes. Cinderella, I didn't even bother watching. Maleficent had some great ideas, but felt kind of run of the mill for the most part. And Alice in Wonderland was, uh, well, uh, I don't, <sighs> this is hard to look at. I just don't personally think some of these tales lend themselves all that well to the kind of popcorn blockbuster they often try to be. The reason they worked so well in animation is because animation has the kind of enchanting quality a simple fairy tale or classic children's story radiates with. I mean, look at the ones not made by Disney to see how bad it can truly get. You can't make Red Riding Hood epic. It's Red Riding Hood. There's a wolf, there's a girl, there's a grandma, then it's, oh grandma, what big teeth you have. There's a wolf and drag, honey, how the fuck do you not see this? But that's it. There's some shit with a woodcutter, but otherwise, end of story, you know? It doesn't need to be a breathtaking vision. And Peter Pan, I am so sorry for what they did to you, my friend. Is this Canada? <laughs> Why are they singing Smells Like Teen Spirit? Stop it! No! No, stop it! Who the fuck looked at this rather charming little tale about a boy who never grows up and went, you know what this needs? More Nirvana. One thing I'd always taken solace in with these live action efforts though, was that they'd never touched a property that really meant a lot to me, until now. Jungle Book isn't one of the best Disney movies. It's the classic people often forget about when discussing Disney classics, but fuck did I love monkeys as a kid. I still do really, they're bloody great. And I'll be damned if I didn't wear out that VHS tape of the Jungle Book when I was a wee Ben, just off the back of the entire King Louie segment. The Jungle Book actually means a fair bit to me, not just as a film, but as a memory. My mum recorded it off TV one time, knowing how much I liked monkeys, and surprised me with it in a box that she'd actually hand drew a cover for herself. It was bloody lovely. So then, when they announced they were doing the live action remake, my immediate thoughts were, No! God, no! Ah, oh, fuck! Disney, why? This didn't work out so well for you last time. I love it! See that little guy there? That's me. I'm Mowgli. <laughs> And I want to tell you all about my wild jungle adventures. Party time! Walt Disney Studios proudly presents The Jungle Book, Mowgli Story. Proudly present? I mean, you, you certainly presented it. I'm not so sure you're proud. Needless to say, going into this film, I expected the absolute worst. And coming out of the cinema, my only thoughts were, holy shit. Fuck, the new Jungle movie is, like, really good. Wow, did not see that one coming. I'm serious, this is excellent. John Favreau and team have honestly, nostalgia aside, pissed all over the beloved original. They've destroyed it. They've made it so much better, I'm not even joking. I know that's kind of blasphemous to say in certain circles because there's always going to be a kind of weird elitism in cinema culture where you have to prefer the original always, but seriously, this is so good. I am prepared to put my cards on the table and say outright, as much as I fondly look back on the animated effort, it doesn't come close to the quality of this movie. This is a vision, amazingly directed, amazingly performed, and amazingly realised. If I had any criticism of this movie, it's more to do with the source material. The actual film succeeds in almost everything it does. You already know the plot, so I'll not spend too much time on that, because it's still the same here. Mowgli is a young boy raised by wolves in the jungle, Shere Khan's an absolute twat of a tiger who decides one day to go and hear you, you little Mowgli prick. Divin like ye, I'm gonna chew your arm off, you cheeky little shit. And Mowgli has to get back to the man village he was actually born in, so as to not get chomped through quicker than a packet of pickled onion space raiders. I will say though, and no spoilers here, 
that this movie does add a little depth to the narrative where necessary, and I do vastly prefer the ending this time. It's only a little change, and I won't tell you what it is that happens, but it has drastically improved on the original, at least for me. Other than that, the beat to beat nature of the plot is very similar to the one everybody already knows. Where the movie excels in isn't in reinventing the wheel. This isn't some crazy reimagining of the Jungle Book narrative that'll have you reeling for days in existential crisis as you question the deep meaning of the subtleties and the choices of language and presentation of the musical numbers. Don't expect to wander out with new philosophical insight as you ask yourself, what are the bare necessities? Those simple bare necessities. What are worries? What is strife? To its credit, the film actually has a fair bit to say about friendship, identity, and a little bit about racism, but for the most part, its biggest concern is making you have a really good time. And it does this through excellent presentation and technical achievement. Again, this is a vision, fully realised by a team of individuals who were obviously all completely in love with the project. The animals alone are a monumental step forward in visual effects. They look just incredible. The way they all move very uniquely, the way they feel so tangibly real within the world they occupy, and the way they manage to capture the voice actors' performances and the expressions without it ever coming across as unnatural or disconcerting had my jaw on the floor. We haven't seen animals this fully realised since Life of Pi, and that movie only really had the tiger to worry about for any prolonged period of time. The jungle is also deeply accomplished. I know that a lot of it was visual effects, but honestly I couldn't tell where the practical sets and on-location shoots stopped and the CGI started. The jungle and the way it was shot made it incredibly beautiful, but never to the point where it looked stylized or fake. The whole thing had a wonderful sense of scale. The world the characters occupied felt massive, varied and foreboding. The journey through the jungle really felt like a journey, like Mowgli was wandering this massive, huge piece of dangerous land. One that felt like it could be stunning and inviting in one moment, and fatal in the next. Some of the shots reminded me of the kind of filmmaking Peter Jackson would employ in Lord of the Rings, showing sweeping vistas to really sell the scale of where the characters fit within the world. It's awe-inspiring stuff. There was one moment that really took me by surprise during King Louis' introduction, where Favreau framed everything in such a way that the reveal of Louis' arm felt massive. Like in both a literal sense, and in the sense that this was a big triumphant movie. It had this David vs Goliath sense of scale that I've not seen anything pull off this well since Shadow of the Colossus. The character who was most well executed however had to be Shere Khan. His booming voice supplied by an excellent Idris Elba matched his intimidating on screen presence. There are times when this CG tiger feels legitimately scary and this is a children's movie. Everything from the way he animated, to his theme, to the delivery of his lines all screamed, holy shit! This tiger's not fucking around, and made the threat of him a constant reason to be sat at the edge of your seat. I heard a handful of people complaining as we left the cinema screen that the mouths looked weird and they didn't like how the animals talked, but honestly, I really don't see it. I thought it all looked great, and at least, if nothing else, it is a million times better than any previous effort. Look at how bad it could have been. Oh, like we haven't seen that five billion times. Whoa! A talking cat? That's just stupid. That's the best you could come up with. I'm a talking cat. Ugh. Christ. To sum up, the movie's bloody belter. Go see it, because if this is the kind of quality live action remake Disney can put out, then it's worth supporting. Plus, let's be honest, it's worth the price of the ticket to hear Christopher Walken sing alone. Though I was a little sad he never said this line when his character first saw Baloo.